Hey what's up guys, it's Oakley, and as you probably heard, CA has announced, after a little bit of leakage <laughs> pre, uh, that came out preemptively, well CA did come out and officially announce the Grim and the Grave, so this is going to be a trailer that does a really cool cinematic job of showing off all the different units, um, kudos to whoever put that thing together, it looks beastly, um, glorious. Now all the new units that we're seeing here look fantastic, looks like they did thorough work in bringing them fully to life lots of attention to detail so this is really really great to see uh, people were obviously aware this was going to be a reskin to some degree it is but it is combined with a whole bunch of new assets uh, as well as pretty well thought out and pretty diverse uh, unit rosters not just tweaks to attack and defense it's got a lot of new things coming to it so this is all pretty exciting um, so what is it going to cost you? Well, it looks like it's eight U.S. dollars. It's going to come out uh, September first. Uh, the special promotion right now allows you to deduct ten percent, so you're looking at around seven bucks uh, for all of this stuff. It looks pretty good. So let's cover what it includes. So first off, two new legendary lords. Uh, these are going to include their own quest chains, magic items, and skill trees. Two new additional lord types, and this is all focused around, uh, I should say, first the empire and the vampires just kind of their confrontation and it has a whole bunch of back lore to it um, but in any case we're just gonna be focusing on what it uh, comes with so two new legendary lores, two new lord types, five all new battlefield units plus variants, five new battlefields for custom battles, multiplayer battles and then 18 elite regiments of renown, I'm glad they packaged that all together and also mind you that the new Multiplayer battle maps are, I think, separate to this DLC. Pretty much anyone can play them. C has been doing a good job of throwing those in over time. Uh, in any case, the first lord is Volkmar the Grim. So they say here that he's the Grand Theogenist, the head of the Cult of Sigmar, and the most powerful religious leader in the Empire. But in the Empire, being a religious leader does not prevent you from uh, fighting. In fact, quite the opposite. The people uh, who are the most pious are often the ones who are the most warlike here. So he actually rides atop the resplendent War Altar of Sigmar, inspiring the soldiers around him to great acts of heroism. Uh, pretty cool campaign bonuses means that his flagellants uh, have improved weapon damage, charge bonus stats, and will be cheaper. He has a series of quests to get uh, legendary items, what is the Jade Griffin, which provides passive augments uh, to restore health, the Staff of Command, which brings numer numerous improvements to his combat skills, public order management, and post-battle loot income. Uh, he also has some abilities that can pop battle prayers, uh, so you can unlock three of these. Uh, offensive, defensive, uh, and then to affect those around him. Uh, unique Mount, so when you unlock the battle prayers, you gain access to the War Altar of Sigmar, which uh, Looks freaking awesome as a mount. That thing is absolutely crazy. Uh, uh, next is uh, Unique Skills, uh, Parabellum, Eternus, and Heretic Hunter, which bring the abilities of Flagellants and Warrior Priests. So, overall, looking really freaking cool. On the Vampire side, we have uh, Helman Gorst. And this story is straight up savage. The backstory on this guy? So, apparently, uh, he says that. You know, he lost his father and his brothers to plague, and this sent him to a spiral of uh, obsessive madness. Uh, but later on, he learned the the black arts, and eventually he kind of turned to necromancy, uh, got transformed, and eventually he now kind of rides into battle, not drawn by horses, but drawn by zombified versions of his dear brothers. Uh, so that's some pretty sick stuff right there. Uh, campaign bonuses, uh, bonus to the casualty replenishment rate of Empire Counts. Uh, all units in his army gain poison attacks. So I like, that's freaking cool. I like how he has not only kind of campaign bonuses to replenishment rates, but actually kind of fundamentally changes the nature of your army by giving all units poison attacks. That's a very cool. I hope to do more of that kind of stuff. Uh, again, he has his own unique quest. Uh, his unique mount, the Brothers Ghost uh, Gorst Corpse Cart. So that's the one where his brothers, his dead brothers, are pulling him around. Uh, unique spells that he has, unique skills, uh, leading from the front, improves abilities of the Plague Bearing Corpse Cart and the Phantasmal Mortis Engine. We'll talk about those later. Next, New Lords. So we get the Arch Lector. So he's the High Priest of the Cult of Sigmar. Uh, or sorry, the Highest Priest is the Grand Theogenist, and then beneath him are... 
his two arch lectors. So you can bring these to the battlefield. They kind of seem like heavy duty heavy duty warrior priests. Uh, they're going to be badass in battle. They have these battle prayers that they can use. Uh, improves melee attack. Shield of Faith, which is an area effect augment for allies. Reduce damage or improves damage resistance. And then Soul Fire is large area of effect offensive power. Mass magical damage to enemy units. Always awesome to see more heroes thrown in. Then you also get this Strigoi Ghoul King, powerful warrior slash spellcaster with also unique abilities. Next, we're moving on to the units. The Corpse Cart and Mortis Engine, two new necromantic um, magical corpse chariots, I guess. Uh, chariots are very dubious in Total War, but as magical chariots, well, I don't know. We'll see. The Black Coach hasn't proven to be very effective. Hopefully, these do switch it up a little bit. The Corpse Cart here uh, confers area of effect regeneration augments on nearby units, and I believe there's different alternate ones um, where it can do different abilities. Um, yeah, so it has an aura of Vigor Mortis, confers regeneration on the corpse card, and raises the melee attack of nearby units. Uh, you can upgrade it separately to increase chances of miscast. So yeah, there's variants of it that you can have. Uh, next, the Mortis Engine here uh, is also a magical support chariot. Uh, this one also regenerates HP for itself and nearby units, so a lot more sustain to the vampire counts coming with this. This is going to be pretty good devastating uh, in terms of having even more powerful death balls of the vampire counts. Gosh, the sustain that these guys can have with multiple units. And I imagine these are going to be very expensive, but you can have, you can, you can tank out so much with cheap zombies, with mortis engines, and then having different magical abilities popped on top of your zombies. You can make those guys, you know, fight for, for hours. Yeah, actually, so you replenish hit points for yourself, and you actually cause magical damage to nearby units. And then actually, upon destruction, the Mortis Engine Explode does a tremendous amount of damage to everything around it. That's kind of a cool feature there. Next, for the Empire, Free Company Militia. These are hybrid troops with Vanguard deployment, so they have short-range pistols as well as swords. Uh, the Flagellants are these crazed fanatics who kind of whip themselves and then go into battle. Um, they are frenzied and unbreakable and there's a penitent special ability which improves physical resistance and melee defense next we have knights of the blazing sun very very cool stuff they're kind of like shock cavalry in the likeness of the reichsguard uh, although these guys have a little bit of a difference in that they uh, have magical damage resistance and then also they deal flaming attacks so that can be pretty good if you're going to pit them against units that flaming attacks do well against uh, so a bit more situational. Uh, so these are new unique units um, that you can presumably take unlimited numbers of. Uh, this is to be contrasted with the Regiments of Renown, where these are elite units, kind of upgrades to existing units. And I don't know how it's going to work in multiplayer. I presume they're going to be limited in your army. Uh, they definitely are on the campaign. And Regiments of Renown function a little bit differently. There's going to be kind of a mercenary recruitment pool type of situation. But instead it's going to be populated by Regiments of Renown. And you have to get a lord that's sufficient skill level to be able to recruit them. So that's a cool feature. So what are these units? Well, for the Empire you have the Tatter Souls, which is a flagellant unit that's even larger than usual. Uh, Sterling's Revenge, it's a free company militia unit that has stock armor piercing missiles and is immune to psychology hammer of witches we talked about before it's an enhanced great cannon basically more physical resistance and shells cause magical damage sigmar sigmar's son are swordsmen but with the added benefit that they're unbreakable that's gonna be very useful silver bullets these are handgunners they have stock and bullets deal magical damage the Sunmaker is a Hellstorm rocket battery that has flaming attacks and it also increases uh, the number of volleys, or the number of missiles per volley, excuse me. The Tempelhof Luminarch is obviously the Luminarch of Hish that's been upgraded and this is really cool. Not only does it have Encourage, but it has the Net of Emin Talk and that is a very underutilized spell. Cool to see it being spread out to different units. I do hope to see that. Um, that special ability used more to block charges, trap enemy lords, trap enemy units, and kind of manipulate the enemy's force. It's, so far, it's been pretty underutilized. Uh, the Royal Outdorf Griffites, obviously improved demigriffs, which can cause terror. Those guys are going to be absolutely frightening, <laughs> considering how powerful demigriffs are right now. And then there's Zintler's Reichsguard, which are typical Reichsguard, but with Vanguard deployment. 
Now on the other side for the vampire counts, you have the feasters in the dusk. These are crypt ghouls with stock and vanguard deployment. The uh, the devils of Schwarzhofen uh, are upgraded Vargais, again with vanguard deployment. Dire pack are dire wolves who actually have bonus versus large increased mass and size. This is going to be very useful, otherwise dire packs, these dire wolves previously kind of got run into the ground. So now bonus versus large is going to be very useful for taking out enemy cav, helping out in those fights with their lightning speed and now increased mass, size, and bonus versus large. They're going to be very, very useful for taking out units on the flank. Uh, the Sternsmen, Grave Guards with Regeneration. The Tithe is actually going to be zombies with increased size and physical resistance. So these are supposed to be uh, zombies, but not just from civilian populations, but uh, instead they're going to be fighting men of Sylvania. You get the Chill Geist, which are Hex Wraith, Magical Resistance and Slowing Aura. The Claw of Nagash, which is a Mortis Engine with Magical Resistance and again the Slowing Aura ability. I really like these abilities that allow you to control enemies' movements. Uh, Black Knights, uh, this upgrade is going to be the Varax Reavers with Regeneration, and then the Skeleton Warriors with Koenigstein Stalkers, this gives them Poison Attack and Improved Armor. So overall, this is very exciting stuff, super in-depth, I do like the price point, given how much they're putting into this, has me excited to see what comes next, and we'll see how the reception is overall. Now, I should be getting access to this relatively soon, so I will give you more in-depth look of how this plays out. Again, it does worry me for how it's going to impact the multiplayer balance, but overall, I think it does look very promising. So that's it for my overview. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more, and see you in the next one. Peace out.